It feels as though Kerbal Space Program 2 may be heading into rough waters, at least if some of the recent community feedback is anything to go by. Whilst these comments are far from a full-on backlash, they aren't looking too good. Broadly speaking, the uncertainty is surrounding two specific issues. The first is performance of the upcoming game. The second is focused on content or the perceived lack of it. Now, take a look at the KSP2 Discord server and you'll find it's running rife with concerns about performance. Whilst the KSP2 subreddit also has been expressing similar thoughts, although to a much lesser extent. The first warning shot for potential performance related issues then came when the Private Division released the system requirements for the game, with an RTX 3080 being recommended to play at 1440p on high settings, these are certainly very heavy requirements. The suspicions on poor performance were then given more weight, riding on the back of some recent gameplay videos of KSP2 that came out of a preview event. YouTuber SW Dennis, for example, posted a video highlighting the game dropping to frame rates of sub 20 FPS. Meanwhile, Everyday Astronauts video also displayed what appeared to be very poor performance in a few areas. Elsewhere, KSP and science expert Scott Manley has confirmed that the Kraken lives on. The Kraken is what the Kerbal community referred to as the original game's spaghetti code or other types of poor performance, basically. That said, it also should be pointed out that not everyone at the preview event experienced these types of issues. During my own two and a half hour session, I didn't notice any significant problems related to performance. I did experience a few micro stutters and hitches, but these were few and far between. Whatever problem might have been going on with the preview build then, these problems didn't appear to be consistent across the entire board, at least not everyone that appeared to be experiencing them. However, it is very important to not dismiss these concerns, as it's very possible that they are, to one extent or another, entirely legitimate. Now, KSP2 is set to launch into early access on the 24th of February, so one way or another, we are going to get a much clearer picture very soon. Now, on a related note, I've seen people talking about rushing out and upgrading their computer so they can meet the minimum system specs or recommended specs. After all, let's face it, not many people are going to have an RTX 3080 or similar in their PC or just laying around. But you know, I'd say at this point, upgrading a PC just for the first days of an early access title and just a single title at that may be pushing things just a bit. Why well, sure, if that's what you really want to do, then go ahead and do it. But do keep in mind that as the game gets optimised, it may be that you don't actually need to upgrade. Also, keep in mind that even if you do upgrade and reach the minimum specs, the recommended specs, or even way beyond, it's still entirely possible that you may still experience performance-related issues. After all, those uh, preview PCs were running RTX 4080s with Ryzen 9 7900Xs, so way beyond the recommended specs. And from what we've seen on some of the videos at least, they were also having performance issues, so keep that in mind before you go out and upgrade. Now, for my part, I will be taking a close look at performance and releasing a video on that on the 24th, highlighting any related issues that I find there. Ultimately then, it is still very early days, and we don't really know about performance one way or another, at least not for sure. But based on the clips, I do feel it's entirely reasonable for people to have doubts about performance. And if you do happen to be a person such as that, if it is going to be an issue for you and it's something that would definitely bother you, then it would make sense to simply hold off before jumping in with KSP2. Now, do keep in mind, at any rate, that the developers have said the game will be optimised over the course of early access, so things should certainly get better in terms of performance However, at the moment, we have no idea by how much that will actually occur. We also don't know yet how efficient the KSP2 codebase is. I'm sure, though, that this is something we will find out very soon as modders and other experts get their hands on the game. So, that's performance discussed. What about people's deal with the content? What's going on there? Well, it turns out that some people are questioning what they feel is a distinct lack of content with KSP2. And to be fair, it's true to say that the version of KSP2 that releases on the 24th will be far from complete. 
Not only are the major features of colonies, interstellar travel and multiplayer coming much later, but so too are staples of KSP2, or KSP franchise rather, such as science and progression unlocks. Perhaps more importantly, however, is that modding won't be officially supported on day one. That is something that will be coming later on, as with many of the other things. Although that said, I won't at all be surprised if uh, people manage to unofficially mod the game anyway. So the matter of fact is that on the 24th of February, KSP2 will release with only a sandbox mode containing the full Kerbal Star System. In terms of parts, KSP2 does have a significant number of them, well over 300 in fact, around 350 I do believe if I counted accurately, that puts it in the same ballpark as KSP1. So yeah, there's plenty to be getting on with if you're happy to mess around with sandbox mode, there's loads of moons and planets to land on, and a lot of vehicle parts, and all the rest of that good stuff. So it really depends really at what you're looking for. I don't feel at this point that uh, Private Division have hidden what's going on, they've been very much open with uh, what to expect here, they've been very clear that this is an early access game, and that it will be missing a lot of content that will be added further down the line. But whether or not someone is happy about that is an entirely different matter. If you'd rather wait for the game to have more content, then it makes perfect sense to simply wait and see to some point after the 24th. Yeah, just wait until the game gets more content added. After all, there is a lot of content still to be delivered. And yes, the first release will definitely be bare, bare bones. The truth is, not everyone is going to be pleased about this, regardless of how clear Private Division are on that fact. And the fact is that the initial version of KSP2 will have far less content than KSP1. What's more, it's entirely possible they're going to be this way for quite a while. But that said, there is a roadmap, and eventually KSP2 will be expanded and it will grow. There's a lot of stuff to come down the line, it is a process that hopefully will be an interesting one to watch and an interesting one to be involved with. The takeaway message there then is if you're the type of player that's quite happy to get involved with a bare bones game and have more content added as time goes on, a game that is entirely likely to be broken and have problems along the way, then yes, early access will be for you. But if not, then sit back, wait and see what happens. So with all that out of the way, there is one final thing I do want to touch on. I want to mention it again. I've mentioned it in the past. And that is the price of $50, which KSP2 will launch at on the 24th. Personally, I feel the price is a little steep for an early access title, but everyone's opinion is going to be different on that, and that is just my opinion, and price, as with many things, is entirely subjective. So it's something you're certainly going to have to make your own mind up on. One other point here is that I do believe Private Division have confirmed that when the game releases into its final version, or version 1.0 at least, the price will likely be increasing, so there is that. At any rate, that's just my thoughts on general performance issues, or potential performance issues, and content-related subjects. Meanwhile, if you'd like some deeper thoughts on the overall game itself, then do check out the video linked on the screen right here.